I made 10 million GP from this method in free to play old school RuneScape. It was really easy and I'm going to show you how to do exactly the same. But first, I want to show you how you can identify your own money makers and share a few practical tips. First off, let's look at how to identify our own money makers in future. Now of course, when new content drops or the market swings, there's lots of money to be made. But these opportunities come and go very quickly, and I like a more stable income stream. You can just Google old school RuneScape money makers to find the money making table on the wiki. This is a great resource. Sort by GP per hour, then scroll to find something that suits you. Note, all of the top money makers are members content, as you can see on the right with this gold star. But if you keep scrolling, or just sort on the members column, you'll soon reach the top money making methods for free to play players. Earning money in free to play is a grind. For me, I like the idea of not using real life money, and I have a feeling of achievement when I can earn a membership purely from free to play. Having said that, you should know that free to play money making methods are a lot slower than members methods. So if you're not interested in that feeling of achievement of earning your own bond in the game, and if you earn enough real world money in say 20 hours of work to pay for membership, then from a time investment point of view, just buying the membership with your credit card is more efficient. Also, if you have another account with membership, then of course you're better off making money on that member's account and then trading the money to the free to play account. Do note that RuneScape 3 and old school RuneScape accounts are linked. So if you have a RuneScape 3 account that already has membership, then that same character will have membership already on Old School RuneScape. Conversely, once you do earn your first bond in Old School, that same character will also have membership on RS3. Last piece of advice, and this was passed on to me when I first rejoined the RuneScape community a few years ago. Don't waste your time on money makers that don't give you XP. Yes, you can make good money without skilling, but in the long run, you will need that XP for all kinds of content, and often the best money makers are only accessible to those with higher levels, so skilling is very useful. So take it or leave it, you can deviate from that rule every now and then, but really you want to be training some kind of skill while you're making money. So let's make our first 10 million. The main method I'm going to show you is super safe and doesn't require much brain power. You can do this while you do some admin, you can watch movies or even play RuneScape on a second account, it's very easy quite AFK, but the trade-off is that it does take time and patience. To make our 10 million, we have three goals. Our first goal is getting level 33 magic. This unlocks telekinetic grab. I remember when I was a kid, I used to look at the bars of gold in the bank and think how amazing it would be if I could just get the magic level to grab those bars. Now we can start off by training magic immediately, but actually I want to do this a bit differently. Why? Because we need to account for our second goal getting total level 500, and we can optimize our path to take us there as quickly as possible. So let me lay out for you the three parallel routes we can take. First up is skilling. Now you can train pretty much any skill. You can kill chickens and collect the feathers to sell them on the GE to give you some starting cash and train your combat skills at the same time. You can train crafting by spinning wool, which you can then use to make money once you're a slightly higher level in crafting. I'll talk a bit more about making money with crafting later. You can train fishing, because it's really quick to train and pretty AFK. Mining and smithing is also a pretty good combination, because they're complementary skills where you can get the ore from mining that you then use for smithing training. You can even do some quests. Questing is really good, because it gets you some levels really quickly, and then you can start your training on a higher level and get more XP per hour. The world's your oyster. All the skills are really quite fast to get the first 30 or so levels, and if you get 30 to 35 levels in each skill, you'll have 500 total level but that's not what I did. You can jump straight into magic training. You'll need it later anyway, so it makes sense. Again, you can kill chickens using magic and sell the feathers. When you first log in, you can go to the magic instructor in Lumbridge and get your first few runes, then use these to kill chickens, or cows if you choose, which will then give you cash to buy more runes. Talking of killing cows, not only is it the true starting experience for every runescape player, but it's actually okay money for starting out. You can sell your first few cow hides for some GP, then once you have a little GP, you can take the cow hides to the tanner in Alcarid, pay him to tan them, and then sell them for even more GP. You can even pick cow hides up that are left on the ground by other players, or buy them in bulk from the GE to make a bit of starting cash. Paying to go through the gate in Alcarid is not expensive and saves you some time, but if you're a cheapskate like me, you can run north and around the fence, 
or you can complete the majority of the quest Prince Ali Rescue to get free passage through the gate forever. If you choose, you can just purely train magic until level 33, but now let's talk about the path that I chose. When you get membership, you probably want to go to a place called Winter Todd. I could do a whole other video about that. It's one of the best skilling methods for an early account, as well as giving you some decent loot. But in order to get into Winter Todd, you need level 50 fire making. If you want to hear more about Winter Todd, let me know in the comments. So this is the path I took. I blitzed woodcutting and fire making at the same time. It was really quick and got me an easy 100 levels. Once I hit level 50 fire making and woodcutting, I simply spread my training out across the other skills to get it done quickly. I only needed level 30 in the remaining skills now to get my total level to 500. To train those levels quickly, you can just Google free to play training in whatever skill you're interested in, and the wiki will explain the fastest and the most cost efficient methods. But I've hit level 33 magic and I'm not yet total level 500. What do I do? Well, you, my friend, have stumbled onto a secret bonus moneymaker, telegrabbing gold. You can go to the bank near the GE, down the stairs, into the basement, and you can find a grabbable gold bar. You can hot worlds to keep grabbing these. But wait, there's more. If you change your crafting, you can turn these gold bars into jewelry for even more money. Just bank it up the stairs, and once you have a decent stockpile, go to the forge just west of the GE in Edgeville. There's a bank really close by, and you can make jewelry there by running back and forth between the bank and the forge. This also gets us crafting levels, so it helps us get to our target, total level 500. There's a money making guide for this on the wiki that helps identify the best gems to buy for the most profit. If you're super greedy, you can even take the jewellery you make down to Port Sarim and sell it at Grum's Gold Exchange for greater than GE rates. However, be careful. If his stock is already high, his prices will drop, and a lot of people do use this method, so I personally just sell it on the GE. However you get to total level 500 is up to you. You can do all kinds of money makers that also give you XP, or you can just beeline certain skills. You can telegrab gold bars all the way up to magic level 99 if you want. You can invest in skills you want in the long term like winter tod unlocks or crafting or smithing for money making later. Or you can literally just go through every skill and train each to level 33 or so. That last method, combined with doing some questing, is probably the fastest way to get there. So now we have total level 500. What does that unlock? Wine of Zamorak. Yes, that's right. This is actually a really nice little money maker in its own right. It's not our end goal, but it is a good milestone on the way there. For this, you need to get yourself some Zamorak robes. You can just buy these on the Grand Exchange if you want, but I like to get my own. There's a Zamorak monk you can kill risk-free in Varrock Palace. Just head through the entrance and attack the monk in the cell under the stairs. Once he drops the robes, you can telegrab them. Or you can just kill Zami monks at the Chaos Temple, which is a bit more dangerous, but not too hard. Once you have your nice new outfit, grab some lore runes and ideally an air staff. If you don't have an air staff, just bring air runes. And then head north of Falador to the Chaos Temple. Go inside, but don't touch the wine. If you touch the wine while any of the monks are alive, you will fail to grab it, you'll take damage and you'll aggro all of the monks, which is not a nice experience. You can telegrab the wine here, but I don't recommend it, as you'll still aggro the monks. Instead, head up the ladder. You can only access this ladder if you are total level 500 or above and are wearing Zami robes. There's a monk in this room, but he won't aggro you if you telegrab the wine from the table here. Just be careful not to accidentally click the wine, because if you do, then you'll take damage and he will aggro onto you. If this happens, just go down the ladder and back up again to reset the aggro. Now we're going to stay here telegrabbing wine, filling up our inventory and then banking that wine. There's a few things you can do to make this more efficient. You can hop worlds to avoid waiting for the wine to respawn, but in my experience, you're only saving yourself a few seconds at best because of the loading times. I prefer to either sit AFK while the wine spawns, or go down the ladder and telegrab the wine from the table downstairs too, before quickly running back up the ladder before the monks kill me. This is a bit dangerous and you should be careful if you're going to do this. Also, note that the monks will pretty much always hit you at least once, and there's a chance of having your magic level reduced when they hit you. So keep an eye on your magic level and don't let it drop below 33, because it's a real pain to wait for your level to return so you can carry on telegrabbing. Also, something that caught me out a few times, check your inventory every now and then. It's very easy to keep telegrabbing without realising your inventory is already full, 
and therefore wasting a few runes. If the wine doesn't disappear when you telegrab it, that's a surefire indication that your backpack is already full. When you have a full inventory, head to the bank in Falador, drop off your wines, and then repeat. You can sell these wines at the GE for pretty good money. According to the wiki, this will earn you just shy of 100k GP per hour, which will create you a nice little stack to springboard you into the next moneymaker. And now I will unveil our final goal in this money-making master plan, level 55 magic. This unlocks high level alchemy, which is consistently the best free to play money maker in the game, unless you have 99 smithing. It will take a little while to get from level 33 magic to level 55 using telegrab, but the whole time you'll be making loads of money from the wine, so it's definitely worth it. Once you hit level 55 magic, head over to the GE and start buying alkables. Again, the wiki shows you the best items to buy for Alki, but be careful, make sure you always check the price you're listing on the GE against what the wiki thinks the item costs. The wiki is kept up to date, but you might need to refresh the page if the prices have changed since you opened it. Now it's simple, spread out your money across your three buy slots in the GE and buy as many alkables as possible. Try to switch what items you're buying every now and then just to make sure that you get a consistent supply. According to the wiki, this will make you around 650k per hour. If you want to really increase your money making, you can note your alkable items and then take them to the wine of Zamorak and alk the items while you're waiting for the wine to respawn. At first, when you have less money, you might be waiting for your buy orders to complete so you can carry on alking, but as you get more wealthy, you can place larger buy orders, meaning this isn't so much of an issue. I find buy orders tend to gradually get filled while I'm alking, and if I go through a dry spell where I'm waiting on orders, I just go and do something else for a bit. In my experience, orders left open over the UK and US nighttime seem to pretty much always get filled. I think this is because a large amount of the player base is located in those countries, and they tend to sell off their items at the end of the day for a lot of different reasons. Some people are flippers, they've tried to buy up stock on the GE and sell it for a profit. If they can't sell all their stock, they'll just dump their items on the Grand Exchange at a low price overnight to get rid of them. Some people just grind all day and sell their stuff before they go to bed, which is fair enough. Also, I've heard that botters will often come and flood the market overnight, which brings the price down too. Bots ruin games, guys. Don't use bots. After a few hours of alking, which will also give you a fair few magic levels, you'll have your 10 million to buy a bond, but don't spend it yet. At the time of making this video, bonds are at an all time high. I highly recommend not just buying a bond at the asking price, but putting in a slightly low ball offer to see if it gets filled. If you're really patient, you could wait for prices to settle a bit because they've been increased significantly by the recent hype around the new Valamore content, as well as a few other things going on both in-game and in the real world. Do note, although it's pretty likely the price will drop in the short term, it's not guaranteed. And in the long term, bond prices will always tend to rise due to inflation. So try not to overpay for a bond, but at the same time, don't wait forever for the prices to drop to what they were a year ago. It doesn't look like that's ever going to happen. And that's it. If you follow these steps, you'll have enough money to buy bonds for membership. Now you can use that membership to get even better money makers, or you can just go and enjoy the game. If you enjoyed this and want to see more videos like this, then let me know. There's a post in my community channel asking what games you're interested in, and what types of videos you enjoy, so go vote and comment to let me know what you'd like to see so that I can make the best videos for you. I'm also covering Andrew Gower's new game, Brighter Shores, I have a video on that, and I also have a KSP2 series that you might enjoy. You can let me know what you thought of this video with a like, or a dislike, and a comment. And as always, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Thanks guys, and have a great day.